What moment is the pinnacle of your career? My first big game, Champions League semi-final against Luis Figo. I remember standing in the tunnel and Luis was like next to me with his white Real Madrid kit on the hair slicked back. It's like wife was a supermodel. And I remember looking at him thinking, I thought he was like glowing. He looked like Jesus or something. I remember thinking, God, I'm in trouble here. Hey everyone, Daniel Quintero here with Football TV and we have a special one for you all today. We have England international, Premier League legend, Owen Hargreaves here with us. Hey Owen, how's it going? I'm pretty good, thanks. How you doing? Not too bad, thank you for asking. Take us back to a young Owen, growing up in Calgary, idolizing Michael Jordan, Deion Sanders at the age of 15. How did you fall in love with the game? Well, my dad's English, you know, so I just kind of grew up, you know, I was the youngest of three boys. My dad played kind of semi-pro in Calgary. And I just used to be on the side, just kicking a ball while he was playing with my older brothers. Um, so, you know, soccer was, or football soccer was in the blood. It didn't really pick me. Uh, I had to play because my, my dad played, my older brother played. And we were always just playing, basically. And I think I was just really fortunate, you know, genetically. It was kind of in the blood, I think. And then um, being the youngest, I got to compete against my older brothers. Um, so I always just... We were a football family, you know, I played, almost played more kind of basketball as a kid. And that's why I loved, you know, the NFL, Deion Sanders and uh, Michael Jordan, NBA and stuff. But football was the sport that was probably more natural for me. You know, it, when I played basketball in high school and stuff, I was a good point guard, but I couldn't shoot, you know. <laughs> so I wasn't tall enough, so that was never going to go anywhere. So soccer was kind of, was, was always the one that probably, the sport almost probably picked me in a way. You moved from Calgary Foothills to Bayern Munich at the age of 16. What are the recruiting or trial process even look like for a kid living in Western Canada? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that extensive back in the day. I know they got all these academies and stuff now and high performance. Back then, it wasn't like that. There was, um, I played for the Foothills and the guy saw me playing for the Foothills, Thomas Niendorf, I think I was 13. And because he was German, he said, you know, I was doing pretty good. And if I continued, because I was tiny as a kid when I was 13, he said, you know, when I grow and get bigger and about 15 he'll call some friends in Germany because he was German so and that's exactly what happened you know one of his friends was a youth coach at Bayern Munich Harald Hopper and, um, and that's how it came about I went on trial and then they took me so I don't think I ever really envisioned you know becoming a pro. Do you visit Calgary often see family friends any landmarks or hotspots? Well, my brothers are still there. My best friend is still there. Uh, my mom and dad are still there. My niece, my niece and my nephews are still there. So, I, but I haven't been back since COVID. So, um, but yeah, Calgary will always be home. You know, that had a huge impact on me. Um, but yeah, I haven't been back for a while. But 16 years in Calgary, 10 in Munich, and now now in the UK. So I've kind of I think traveling has been a you know moving around has been a big part of my life. Yeah, you've had many places call home. I feel blessed. Obviously, my parents are British. So that, that, you know, we have a lot of family here too. Um, but I just think traveling is, is an amazing thing, you know, travel, learning different cultures and adapting. I think sometimes leaving your comfort zone is, is a good thing. And obviously I, I love Canada, but I couldn't play professional football back then. So that's why I went to Germany. And then I wanted to change the scenery from, from Munich, so. You're the most decorated Canadian born footballer in history. Yet as a teenager, you were rejected a call up to Canada U17 World Cup team. How would you say that decision changed your outlook of your career? I didn't really overanalyze it, really. I mean, it was, I don't know if it was a surprise because I'd never been to a trial like that. I didn't know how good, you know, you know, Canada's a pretty big country. You know, you don't play against, you don't play against a lot of the guys from, from the East because it's so far away. But obviously that, when you get all those guys together, um, I think back then decisions were probably made slightly different than they are now, just because of geographically um, and kind of the size of players and stuff. But in the end, you know, you, you, there's no point worrying about something, you, you know, you got no control over. So um, shortly after I went on trial at Bayern Munich and they took me, that was probably the, the best thing for me. And I think sometimes, you know, not letting it get to you, you know, and just keep pushing, you know, everyone's going to have an opinion, but I think you can control your effort. And so for me, when I went on pitch, I just kind of, I used to give everything and just hope and see where the chips would fall. Let's take things back to the 06 World Cup in Germany. The same year you were named England Player of the Year. What went wrong for England and what would you have changed? Well, we would have been better at penalties. That probably would have helped. <laughs> we, you know, we had an amazing team. We had so many amazing individuals, probably one of the best generations, I think, of England, you know, with Beckham, Lampard and Gerrard, Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney, John Terry, Rio Ferdinand. We just had everything. But we just, we never really turned that great 
group of individuals into a team, you know, and um, that's probably one of my only regrets really from from my careers with England that we didn't go on to win something because we probably should have with the players that we had. But it just shows you that, you know, you know, you need to make a team out of it. So we were good, but we weren't good enough. And I think pen my whole career, the big moments were decided on penalties. You know, I, I won two Champions Leagues on penalties and I went out in two major, three major tournaments, two on penalties to Portugal. So I think uh, working on penalties a bit more might have helped us a bit. We've witnessed Canada qualify for the first World Cup since 1986, with talent seeming to come out of the nation in abundance now. What would you say the difference is in the Canadian football system now to when it was when you were a youngster? From when I was a young kid, you know, we had so many amazing young kids, so many talented kids that played. Because all, you know, Canada's just a um, multicultural country and everybody's, everybody's parents were, f you know, football fans, whether they're from, you know, Scotland, Ireland, England, Spain, Italy. Um, Mexico, you know, South America, whatever. All the guys, the dads play football, so their kids play football. So I think up to like 12, I used to think my team, the team I, teams I play on, we could go compete with anybody in the world, I think, at that age. But then I think in Canada, there's so much choice of other stuff to do. You know, whereas in England, I think the guys play football or in some of these other countries, it's just football and they focus on it. Whereas I think in Canada, you know, school-wise, and there's so many other different sports and there's so much... So whereas now I think they're getting the coaching is getting a little bit better. They're more focused on you know training more at say that important age, twelve, um, and getting more specific. Uh, but I think the talent pool has always been there. You know, there's so many t talented kids in Canada. Um, I think coaching is getting better, facilities are getting better, um, and I think they'll continue to produce um, really good players. I mean, Alfonso was just, you know, he's just uh, one of the best out there right now, <laughs> and he's one of a kind. You know, physically his traits are just. Are super special but now he's in the he's in the right environment he went from vancouver and now he's at Bayern, and he's just he's flourishing and i just hope more kids can can follow that path now let's get into a little bit more of a rapid fire kind of questions um i'm going to name out a little bit of your previous teammates and i want you to respond with just one word let's start things off with oliver khan serious michael balak exceptional zero berto technique bastian schweinsteiger funny Roy McKay. Finisher. Wayne Rooney. Uh, amazing. Michael Carrick. Passer. Paul Scholes. Mm, genius. Rio Ferdinand. Unique. Rio, Rio, yeah, Rio was cool. He could kind of manage with anybody, young or old. And last but not least, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, just ridiculous. Ridiculous player. 2001 Champions League or 2008 Champions League? I don't know. I didn't really celebrate the first one because I remember I flew my mom and dad over from Canada. They were both working at the time. I, I got tickets and I snuck out to give them the tickets. I was so shy, you know, I didn't want to look like, I mean, imagine just giving your mom and dad tickets to the game, but I didn't want, you know, so I snuck out to get them these tickets. And I didn't even celebrate when we won because I didn't want the German, I, back in the day in Germany, there was very much like the young and the old and you didn't, you like, the, there was like a big hierarchy there. so. We won, I didn't even celebrate, I didn't have a drink. I just sat quietly at the table with my mom and dad. Because uh, I was already like preparing for the next season, you know, because it was my first year and I didn't want them to think I was over celebrating. So I didn't really enjoy that. Oh, not that I didn't enjoy it, I just didn't celebrate. And then the second one, yeah, it was cool because I had experienced it before. We had an amazing team and uh, it was just a, a cool experience. But when you play in games like that, you don't really, you don't enjoy them as much as you think, you know, because you, you just like, it's almost like a relief that you won and you're able to achieve. You know, you didn't. The, that's the one regret I have. I don't. I don't think I enjoyed the, the big moments uh, enough. Would you trade all your career accolades to have won the World Cup with England? Mm, no. What happens happens. You know. I mean, you earn the right to win those trophies. You know, with with Bayern and with Man United, we earned the right. With England, we never did. I mean, we had amazing pieces of the puzzle, but that's what it is. That's all we had. We, you know, we didn't have we didn't have the right ingredients for the recipe. And that's what I love about sport. You know, if you don't have it right, you, you, you don't win. Um, so with Bayern and United, we, we had that. Um, with England, we, we, we could have had it, but we didn't. So no, I, I, I don't think you can, I wouldn't swap any of them for, for another. Best player you ever played with? It's a toss up really, because it's hard because Cristiano's, you know, it's just Cristiano, you know, he's like 6'1". You know, probably 85 kilos, explosive, can, got 40 inch vertical, you know, could do everything. Paul Scholes is like, you know, five foot seven, not that quick, 
but he's like two steps ahead of everybody else. So in a way, it's not really you can't really compare the two because they're d completely different. But Paul Scholes was just like a genius. He was just like a football genius. Who was the best player you've ever played against? <sighs> there were so many good ones. Uh, Messi, but I didn't actually play against him. He was on the other side. Obviously, Messi was crazy. Zidane was probably my favorite. You know, he just had this amazing presence. He was so, he just had this amazing size, and he, technically he was just crazy good. Um, I'd say Zizou was was probably my favorite. Give me your all-time England five-a-side team. It can be a mix of attackers, a goalkeeper, however you want to shape it up, really. I'd have Wayne Rooney up front, Stephen Jard, Paul Scholes, Bobby Charlton, and I don't know, who am I going to put in goal? Um, that position, we, we had a lot of change when I played, you know, we had a lot of different guys, so uh, maybe I'll put Peter Shilton in goal, maybe. Now that we did our England, um, what about uh, the Manchester United five-a-side? I know you named some of your teammates in the England squad already, but let's see the Manchester United five-a-side team. Edwin van der Sar in goal. Well, Cristiano would have to be in there, obviously. Scalzi would have to be in there because he was just crazy. I think I'd have Bex and Ryan Giggs. Good balance, left and right. And what about yourself? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'll just be watching. I'll just cheer the boys on. From those two teams now, the England five side and the Manchester United five side, which one do you think is taking the win today? <laughs> I think the United probably won with, you know, Cristiano's probably will end up doing something crazy. If there's one player in today's game that you would say reminds you of yourself, playing style-wise, who would it be, if any? I mean, a lot of guys play the same position, but I think everybody interprets it differently. You know, like Rodri and Declan Rice play the same position, but play it differently. I don't know, I tended to play so many different positions, you know, so like those guys all play the same position all the time. When we like, when we won the Champions League with United, I think I, in the five kind of knockout rounds, I played a different position every game. You're right, versatility is hard to find nowadays. Players playing specific roles or styles, it's hard to find players like yourself. The coaches are more specific now, you know, about yeah. players being kind of, you know, I think back in the day players rotated or played a lot of different positions, especially guys like athletic like me, we played a lot of different positions. So. Depending, if we played like somebody that was really good, the manager used to put me on him often because I was like really explosive. So to try and stop them, like the Champions League final against Ashley Cole. So um, I think now the coaches are more detailed, you know, and they just kind of want specialists. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I would have played different if, if I had co coaching from now. Maybe people would have made me specialize more. What is the most important piece of advice Charles Ferguson told you? He used to say, um, when it's all said and done, if you can... If people can say that you worked hard, he said that is, you know, you, sh you can be proud of that because, you know, everybody in that dressing room was t talented. Everybody had talent, you know, was probably the best player from his neighborhood or his city or his county or his whatever, his country. But in the end, you know, you had to, you still had to work hard. And he used to say to us, you know, if you work hard, your t you, you know, your talent will come through. So I think for us, he just, he expected and demanded that you know, that we work hard every time and then, you know, let your, then you can show your ability. But if, if you didn't work, you weren't going to play with Sir Alex, that's for sure. What moment is the pinnacle of your career? My first big game, Champions League semi-final against Luis Figo. And I was only a young kid. I was on, a, I was on like a U team contract at the time. And I remember standing in the tunnel and Luis was like next to me with his white Real Madrid kit on the hair slicked back. It's like wife was a supermodel. And I remember looking and thinking, I thought he was like glowing. He looked like Jesus or something. I remember thinking, God, I'm in trouble here. I'm playing against Luis Figo. And then when I got out into the game, he like left a ball like just in front of me after like five minutes. And I remember just thinking, oh, you, you know, you can't leave that there, Luis, like that. And so I took it off him and sprinted by him. And it was weird. This like light went off in my head, like, you know, you can do this, do you know? And when you see people like that, you think, God, he's, you know, he's going to destroy me. So that moment had a huge impact on me to make me believe in myself more, you know, and just trust myself. And when you get on the football pitch, um, everybody's, everybody's an equal, you know, so you, you know, so you reputation don't count for anything and you can go for it. So for me, that moment completely changed my career because he was somebody I loved and adored. And then playing against him um, made me believe, you know, that, that, that I can, that I can become a pro because I wasn't at the time. I was still a, a young kid so that 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 moment changed me more than anything i'd say definitely a very special moment for any young player to start off their career 
Are you currently streaming any sports or TV shows? I always liked the NBA. Um, I was a big NBA fan, obviously, with Michael Jordan and Steve Nash was a friend, so I used to kind of go watch games when he was in Dallas and Phoenix and stuff. NFL, I used to like watch Red Zone on a Sunday. My, my dad and my brothers are big Steelers fans, but I just have sport, elite sport, you know, the, the top sport. So um, but I still watch a little bit of NBA, NFL, but mostly, it's probably mostly soccer right now still. Well, Owen, thank you again for spending this time with us. It was definitely a pleasure. Wishing you and your family all the best. Thanks, mate.